Are genetically modified foods called GMOs safe for you and your family, as GMO promoters insist? Or are these lab-created foods actually frankenfoods, a distortion of what Mother Nature intended and a ticking time bomb that will lead to an explosion of diseases and premature death? This is a very common herbicide that's used on GMO crops. I'm going to pour it into this vase because I want to show a quick demonstration. Ooh, it's powerful. All right, that ought to do it. Now, on your left is an organic ear of corn, grown as Mother Nature intended, completely free of toxic chemicals. On the right, this is an ear of corn that's been genetically modified in the laboratory to tolerate high levels of herbicides and pesticides. I'm going to dip this genetically modified ear of corn into this herbicide. All right. Now, I understand it doesn't appear that this GMO corn has been harmed. But let me ask you this question. Which of these would you eat? Which one would you serve to your family? To your children? That's an important question. Now that studies with lab animals show that just a 33% GMO diet can cause life-threatening diseases at the equivalent human ages of 10 to 50, with 50% of males dying prematurely and 70% of females dying prematurely. Today, our special report on genetically modified foods will answer all of your questions regarding the potential health hazards of GMO foods and also provide a solution. Recently, Newsmax Health conducted a survey and the results surprised us. 85% of respondents were concerned about GMO foods, the pesticides sprayed on them, and also the chemical additives used in processed foods that can potentially lead to serious diseases. All of these topics are included in our presentation today, cracking the GMO code. And for starters, consider that genetically modified organisms, or GMO foods, were approved in 1994, and by 2003 were in wide use. But what few people know is that today, GMO foods represent 75 to 95 percent of America's biggest crops, corn, soybeans, sugar beets, potatoes, squash, papaya, vegetable oils, even farm-raised salmon. Now, we've been told that GMOs are safe for human consumption, but as you'll see in just a moment, no long-term studies support their safety and, in fact, show just the opposite. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from one of America's leading medical researchers and nutritionists, Dr. Russell Blaylock. Now, Dr. Blaylock is going to tell us what GMOs are, why they are rapidly invading our food supply, and most important, the disturbing results of the lifetime animal studies. And note I said lifetime studies because the World Health Organization only requires 90 days of testing to claim foods are safe. But when lab mice were fed a 33% GMO diet over their entire lifespan, which is typically 30 to 36 months, life-threatening diseases showed up as early as four months and in very high numbers between 18 and 21 months. In human years, four months is about age 10 and 18 to 21 months is age 40 to 50. And all of the 90-day studies that proclaim GMO foods safe missed these important results. Well, the good news is that Dr. Blaylocks has the facts for us as well as the solution. He has cracked the GMO code and has written a very easy to use booklet, Dr. Blaylocks Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods. With this guide, you will be able to identify and avoid GMO produce as well as frozen, canned, bottled, boxed, and bagged foods that contain GMO ingredients. Now, you may already know that Dr. Blaylock is the author of several best-selling health books as well as the popular editor of the Blaylock Wellness Report, the monthly health advisory letter with over 100,000 loyal readers. But let me tell you something about this medical hero that you may not know. Dr. Blaylock was trained at LSU School of Medicine. 
For 25 years, he was a highly regarded neurosurgeon practicing in major South Carolina and North Carolina hospitals. He's taught surgical procedures at medical schools, even co-invented an intricate neurosurgical procedure that's still used today. But his practice took a very dramatic turn after both of his parents contracted Parkinson's disease and then died when conventional medicine failed them. Of course, he was devastated. So Dr. Blaylock turned to medical research, focusing on the causes of diseases, something that's not taught in medical schools nor researched at pharmaceutical companies for that matter. He soon discovered that the root causes of many diseases can be found in foods that have been genetically altered, foods that retain residues of herbicides and pesticides, and foods that contain harmful chemical additives. Now you could call Dr. Blaylock a reluctant hero because although he had planned on a traditional medical career, he bravely spoke out when he discovered the truth was not being reported and in fact was being covered up. And that's when he started writing his monthly Blaylock Wellness Report, not only to report on the causes of illness and disease, but to provide effective natural solutions. He also reports on bad medicine, which unfortunately is all too common. Now today, Dr. Blaylock will give you the facts on GMO foods and he'll show you what you can do to protect yourself and your family from the serious diseases and early death the animal studies show they can cause. Let's go to Dr. Blaylock now. Later on, I'll be back to the show to show you how to use his guide to avoiding GMO foods, and I'll also show you how to get your very own copy to use at your local grocery store. Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Blaylock. What I want to talk about today is GMO foods and whether or not they're dangerous. Uh, this is a very important issue because so many foods now are uh, genetically modified. And if it's not the actual food itself, it's ingredients from genetically modified foods. So let's take a look at uh, the history of this. Now, by 1994, the government uh, of the United States allowed them to uh, introduce gen genetically modified foods into the uh, food supply. Uh, this was uh, initially just one or two foods. By 1998, that it increased to more foods. So by 2003, some 63 percent of crops in the United States were genetically modified. Now you'll see the terms uh, GMO and GM. It, uh, the term GMO stands for genetically modified organism. Uh, GM is just genetically modified, so they're used synonymously. Uh, today, the number of uh, foods, uh, depending on the food that are genetically modified, ranges from 73 percent, uh, that's mainly for corn, uh, as high as 95 percent, which is the soy foods. So uh, a lot of foods that are used in a lot of products are genetically modified. Uh, the idea of genetically modifying a plant basically is to make that plant resistant to disease uh, or to insects. And that's because plants produce uh, pesticides that kill the insect. It makes a natural pesticide. It also can make plants produce more of a certain protein, supposedly making it a healthier food. For instance, in a, a third world nation where protein deficiency is a big problem, uh, if you had foods that produce more protein, that would be a good thing. So that was the idea behind genetically modifying it. It also can make plants uh, resistant to uh, herbicides. Many environmental groups have protested this. Uh, some of these are uh, very important, and some are kind of questionable, but we'll cover the ones that are most important. What the most important thing about GMO foods is once you alter the gene in the plant, uh, it cannot be reversed. So if you genetically modify a significant number of plants uh, in your country, and then it uh, blows the seed over into other fields and cross-pollinates, then all of the plants become genetically modified, and eventually you could have 100% of all crops in the United States and the world uh, genetically modified. And you cannot reverse that. You cannot go back to pure foods once that happens. So if problems arise, you're stuck with it. Uh, now, basically, as we said, when you alter the genetics, for instance, if you want to make a plant that's more resistant to disease or insects, uh, you insert a gene that causes that plant to produce higher levels of a natural pesticide, which we call phytoalexins. All plants produce these natural pesticides to protect themselves. Usually it's in a very low concentration, and it only secretes this 
when the plant is under attack by these diseases or by these insects. The problem with genetically inserting this is it produces much higher levels of these uh, pesticide substances and it produces it all the time. So that if you eat the plant, then you're getting very high levels of these phytoalexins, which are known to be carcinogenic. Uh, the other thing is they can uh, make these seeds of the plant what they call a terminal seed. Basically what that means is when the plant uh, is ready to seed, it no longer produces seed. This allows the company that makes the terminal seed uh, to uh, require the farmer to buy new seeds every year. Now what that means to you as a consumer is you're going to pay a lot more for your food. Hi, we'll get back to Dr. Blaylock's presentation in just a moment, but first I wanted you to know three key background facts. Number one, across the nation, GMO companies have spent tens of millions of dollars defeating initiatives that would require GMO labeling. And as a result of that, no state currently requires labeling and consumers are in the dark about what they're eating. Fact number two, recently two million people around the world participated in a march against one of the leading GMO seed manufacturers to protest that company's aggressive policies to replace natural seeds with their patented GMO seeds. Fact number three, one of the leading GMO seed makers not only sells patented seeds that farmers must purchase new each year, but they also make and sell the herbicides and pesticides that these crops use in larger quantities. What are GMO companies hiding? Why are millions of people protesting? Why do patented GMO seeds use more herbicides and pesticides? And most important, are we headed for a health crisis and don't even know it? Today, Dr. Blaylock will answer those questions and also give you a practical, easy to use solution in his conveniently sized guide booklet. This is gonna be very important because a genetic modification has been made on our biggest crops to force the plants to produce a much higher level of its natural pesticide and not just when under attack by insects, but continuously. And that's not all. The patented GMO seeds have been engineered to tolerate high levels of chemical herbicides and pesticides, enabling farmers to use large quantities of them without harming the plants, which in turn ensures a larger yield. But what about you? What about your family? What about your children? When you eat GMO produce or GMO frozen foods or packaged foods that contain GMO ingredients such as corn and soy, you do in fact ingest higher levels of plant and chemical pesticides, both of which are known carcinogens. In fact, when Dr. Blaylock resumes his presentation, you're gonna see that the most serious diseases that just a modest GMO diet caused in the lab animals were aggressive cancers, and in particular, an explosion of breast cancers. Well, that is why Dr. Blaylock wrote his guide to avoiding GMO foods. And don't worry about taking notes today because later on I'm actually going to show you how to obtain a free DVD video of Dr. Blaylock's full presentation today. Plus, you'll get a special offer that includes free copies of Dr. Blaylock's guide to avoiding GMO foods and his special report, Food Additives, What You Eat Can Kill You. Okay, when I come back, I'm going to show you how to use this small handy guide in your grocery store to identify and avoid GMOs while at the same time making safe food choices. Right now, let's get back to Dr. Blaylock. The other is the what we call pesticide ready uh, type of genetically modified food. And the, the idea here, and this is particularly in soybeans, uh, what they do is they insert a gene that makes that plant resistant to herbicide so that you can use much higher concentrations of herbicide up around the plants and get rid of the wheat. The problem with that is when you use herbicide around plants that are edible, the plant will absorb some of that herbicide that's been shown to be carcinogenic. That is, it can cause different cancers, uh, particularly uh, what we call lymphomas or leukemias, which are the fastest growing malignancies, particularly in uh, people age 30. So we see this as uh, some issues that are quite serious. What does the research show when we look at uh, what has been done to see just how dangerous these GMO foods are. Well, there's two parts to this research. One is the herbicides. Uh, is the toxicity or the cancers that we're seeing due to the excess herbicides that's being used, or is it the genetically modified component of the plant itself? 
So what they did, they took some animals, uh, usually rats or mice, and they would feed them a diet that consisted of about 11 to 33 percent GMO corn for two years. Now the lifespan of a, a rat or a mouse is about two and a half, three years. So what we're doing is seeing a lifetime study. What happens when you consume GMO type foods for an entire lifetime? And that's what we want to know. Well, they used control animals in which they fed natural uh, uh, corn, the non-GMO, and what they found is that if you feed animals uh, a natural uh, food, once they reach that two years uh, limit, which would be in a human toward middle age, about 20% of the females will die and about 30% of, of the males will die. That's just their natural death rate. But if the animals are eating GMO corn, we see something very frightening. The death rate in the males more than doubles. It's 50%. And in the females, it's 70%. So we see uh, uh, almost a two and a half uh, times increase in death rate uh, in both males and females consuming this GMO food. Uh, most shocking is that these animals were dying prematurely uh, even when they were eating the lower dose GMO food. So it's not a dose related thing. Uh, a lot of toxins uh, may not be that toxic if you're consuming a lower dose, uh, only if you're consuming the higher dose. But here we found out even consuming the lower dose, they had premature death. The females that consumed the GMO diet died about at age uh, 21 months, and the death rate was six times higher than those that were eating the normal uh, diet. So it's a, it's a direct effect of the GMO uh, gene insertion itself. The females were dying of breast tumors and the males were dying of kidney damage. We uh, explained that GMO can cause tumors. And uh, the study in which they were feeding the animals the GMO uh, foods, about 33% in their diet, which is equal to a human diet, uh, when they fed them the low dose, they found that the females were producing uh, these very malignant tumors. Uh, the ironic thing was that the size of the tumor, and these were massive breast cancers, the size of the tumor was not related to the dose. That is, a low dose produced just as many of these giant tumors as did the higher dose. So it's not dose related. The tumors occurred in females five times more often than the males. So it tends to occur in both. In other words, you'll see some males will develop breast cancer from it, but mainly it's occurring in the females. 90% of all tumors uh, in the females were breast cancers, even though there were some other types of cancers. For instance, there were ovarian cancers in some of the females and skin cancers in both males and females. Uh, the tumors were unusual in that they were so enormous. I mean, these tumors were almost the size of the animal itself, and they grew so rapidly, became highly uh, invasive type of tumors. Uh, this is uh, quite unusual in agents that causes uh, cancers. Interestingly, the majority of these tumors appeared after 18 months of feeding this GMO diet, which is uh, important because the World Health Organization sets the study uh, time at 90 days. That is, you watch the animal for 90 days, and if they seem to be healthy or if they get sick, uh, it, you don't look at it after 90 days. Well, none of the animals developed any tumors within that period. They all developed them at 18 months or later. The earliest tumor was seen at four months, well beyond the three-month limit set by the World Health Organization. So when you read articles, for instance, in scientific journals which said, well, we didn't find that, well, they stopped the study at that three-month period. When you uh, want to consider, well, how important is this to me? Uh, what is my chance of being exposed to these GMO crops? Well, 75% of all corn grown in the United States, for instance, is GMO-type corn. Uh, many foods use corn ingredients, uh, maltodextrin, corn uh, sugars, corn flour, etc. The onset of the tumors in humans also would occur at a period that's equal to 18 months in a mouse, which is middle age in humans. So if humans are consuming this, say, from birth or from early in life, you wouldn't expect these massive tumors or rapid growing tumors to appear into middle age. Well, uh, most of the people that's been eating these GMO foods in the world have not reached that point yet. 
So this is something we're going to see in the future, uh, the very near future, whether or not there's going to be an explosion of breast cancers, ovarian cancers, and certain skin cancers. Uh, so uh, essentially, we have not been eating this GMO food long enough to see these effects. We'll get back to Dr. Blaylock in just one moment, but I wanted to emphasize a very important point. GMO crops have been genetically modified to tolerate much higher doses of herbicides and pesticides without harming the plants. And the reason is this ensures a larger yield for the farmer. But if the animal studies are any indication, these toxic chemicals, especially in these larger quantities, pose a serious health threat to consumers who eat GMO foods. Let me be clear on this. Before GMO foods were invented in the laboratory, the herbicides and pesticides had to be used sparingly or they would harm the plants. But then scientists genetically modified the plants so they would not be hurt by these larger doses of herbicides and pesticides. And conveniently, the GMO seed companies also make and sell the chemicals sprayed on the GMO crops. Now, that may be good for GMO companies and large growers, but what about your health? the health of your family, the health of your children. Let me demonstrate. This is one of the most commonly used pesticides on the market. And here are just a few popular corn products. Chips, cereal, popcorn. Okay, we know 75% of all corn crops in the U.S. today are genetically modified GMOs, which means they use higher quantities of herbicides and pesticides on them. So. Let's add the pesticide. Would you eat these foods? Would you serve them to your family, to your children? The answer is an obvious no, of course not. And that is why you need Dr. Blaylock's guide to avoiding GMO foods. And with our special offer today, you can receive a free copy right now. Let me show you what this conveniently sized guide booklet will do for you. First, it's only 24 pages. Everything you need to know to avoid GMO foods written in very simple language with lists of foods and food ingredients to avoid and clear illustrations of the labels to look for to ensure safe non-GMO foods. The advantage is you don't have to study a 200-page book filled with technical data to find out what you need to know. And second, because of its convenient size, you can take Dr. Blaylock's guide to your grocery store and favorite restaurants. It'll fit right in your handbag or in your pocket, in the glove box of your car. And even before you get to your grocery store, you'll learn a simple trick to eliminate up to 50% of GMO foods when making out your shopping list. Then, once you're at the grocery store, you'll have an aisle-by-aisle -aisle guide to avoiding all of the hidden GMOs in fresh produce, frozen foods, canned, bagged, and boxed foods, as well as dairy products and even meat, chicken, and fish. Remember, America's biggest crops are now 75 to 95 percent genetically modified. And it's not just fresh produce and frozen foods, but the GMO in corn, soy, sugars, flavorings, and oils that are put into thousands of packaged and canned goods. Then there's the corn and soy-based animal feed, which taints dairy products, meats, poultry, fish. Today, grocery stores are infested with genetically modified organisms. And thankfully, Dr. Blaylock has cracked the code. He has made it so easy for you to identify and avoid GMO foods. This is how to protect your family. Okay, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a big orange button. Clicking on that button takes you to our no-risk subscription offer to Dr. Blaylock's Wellness Report for just 15 cents a day. This special offer includes free copies of Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods as well as his special report, Food Additives, What You Eat Can Kill You. It also includes a DVD of Dr. Blaylock's full GMO presentation that you're seeing today and a special report on buying organic foods on the cheap so you can buy safe foods without spending more. At Newsmax Health, we're making this extraordinary offer because we think it's important that you try Dr. Blaylock's wellness report at no risk. He's been on the front lines of finding the real causes of diseases, exposing harmful food ingredients, reporting on bad medicine, and providing safe alternatives. 
And more than any other nationally known doctor, he's been speaking out on GMOs and the deceptive labeling that the food industry practices to hide these potentially harmful foods from you. You're going to find his guidance invaluable in the coming months, not only to stay up to date on GMOs, but to get safe, natural solutions to most illnesses and diseases so that you can keep your family healthy. Click on that big orange button at any time to start your no-risk subscription at just 15 cents a day, and at the same time, claim your free gifts. I encourage you to do this now because demand for Dr. Blaylock's GMO guide booklet is running very high. And by acting now, you'll make sure you can get your copy free. Then you can come right back to watch the rest of Dr. Blaylock's presentation. I promise you won't miss a single minute of it. Click that big orange button whenever you're ready, and we'll keep that order button for this special offer activated and available for several minutes. Now, what about the soy products? Uh, well, we know that 95% of soybeans already are GMO in the United States and throughout much of the world. Women have been told that they can prevent breast cancer by eating soy products, uh, soy milk, soy uh, foods, cheeses, etc. Uh, what they have not been told is that even with non-GMO uh, soybeans, uh, soy products, it increases the growth of cancers that are already there in the breast and makes these cancers much more invasive. That is, they're more deadly. So actually, soy can make breast cancers grow a lot faster. The food market is flooded with these soy-based products. Soy milk, uh, which you see on every grocery shelf, soy food, soy cheeses, soy-based butter, soy flour, and many, many more products are now this GMO-type soy. And it's not no, uh, noticed or, or notified on the uh, food itself, so you don't know you're consuming uh, this GMO food. What about babies and soy formula? Uh, that's a major concern because then the baby is going to start consuming this as soon as it's born for an entire lifetime. This is getting close to that mouse model. So if we look at uh, the soy-based infant formula, it's the most common formula used in the United States. Uh, something like uh, 30 to 40 percent of babies now are, are on infant formula, most of them are soy formula. Even the natural form, uh, form of uh, soy that is non-GMO has very high levels of manganese, fluoride, aluminum, and glutamate. All of them are toxic. Uh, GMO soy adds new factors to that already toxic mix uh, to make it even more toxic. So you have a small baby it has poor detoxification, poor defense system, consuming uh, a milk uh, that not only contains natural toxins, but also now these GMO added toxins. Uh, soy contains estrogen-like substances, that's well known, uh, and it can affect the development of the female breast, particularly in these, uh, these young children, and possibly the sexual development in the males as well, the male babies. Uh, it's estimated that soy formula, natural and GMO, contains uh, amount of estrogen-like substance that's equal to a baby uh, consuming five contraceptive pills a day. The sexual development of babies is determined by the uh, uh, reproductive hormones early in life, and that is estrogens and testosterone. So if a male baby, as soon after birth, is consuming uh, these estrogen-like products, it's going to play a part in the development of that child's uh, brain as to whether it's either a male brain or a female brain. We'll return to Dr. Blaylock's presentation in one moment, but I want to emphasize a key point in his research. Women are at increased risk for breast cancer when they eat soy foods, even when those foods are not genetically modified. But the larger doses of herbicides and pesticides used on GMO soy crops are toxins that could make breast cancers more deadly and also potentially cause ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, leukemia, and lymphoma. Another key point is that soy-based baby formulas can adversely impact the development of their immune system. So do you want your children or your grandchildren eating GMO foods? Wouldn't it be better to play it safe? That's why you've got to have Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods. Let me show you for a moment how this small, handy guide will actually help protect your family. We currently have no GMO labeling requirements, and thus food makers use deceptive labels 
to hide GMO ingredients and other potentially harmful additives. Let me show you what they're doing. Look at these safe sounding labels. Natural, all natural, pure, GMO free. Hey, these sound nutritious and safe, right? Not so fast. There actually is no legal requirement that these labels stand for anything. Foods with these labels can be GMO, and they can also be sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. Well, Dr. Blaylock cuts through this deception and shows you how to easily identify GMO foods and ingredients in packaged, canned, and bottled foods. You'll also see right inside this handy guide the terms and the labels that do, in fact, have legal meaning and indicate safe foods. And you can do this in the grocery store as you shop. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you just how easy that is. But right now, click the big orange button that you see at the bottom of your screen to activate your no-risk subscription to Dr. Blaylock's Wellness Report and claim your free gifts. For just 15 cents a day, you are going to receive a no-risk subscription to Dr. Blaylock's Wellness Report so that you can stay informed on GMOs and also get natural solutions to virtually every health problem. And only with our special offer today, you'll receive free copies of Dr. Blaylock's valuable guide booklet, the special reports, and the DVD of this entire presentation. Now, just briefly, before we return to Dr. Blaylock, here is another way that this guide booklet can help you. Have you ever wondered about those small stickers you see on fresh produce? Let me show you what those mean. If the number on the sticker begins with a 4 or a 3, it's been traditionally grown. That may or may not be GMO, but it will definitely have been sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. Take, uh, take this apple. The sticker begins with the number 3. Traditionally raised, sprayed with herbicides and pesticides. But this apple ah, begins with a number 9. This is your safe and healthy choice. You see, when the sticker on fresh produce begins with the number 9, it means it's organic and will not be a GMO, nor will it have any toxic herbicides or pesticides sprayed on it. Let's take another quick look around. Uh, this squash, safe and healthy, begins with a number 9, right? This one, this one should be avoided. This one has the number 4 as the first digit. Let's take a look at uh, this pair. Number nine, it's okay. This one's number four, walk right on past. How about these apples, number three? Number nine, safe. There's also a voluntary GMO label, which begins with a number eight, but you will never see it because no company wants to identify their foods as genetically modified now that the animal studies are showing fast-growing tumors and kidney and liver damage and early death. And that is why GMO seed companies and some of America's largest food manufacturers are spending tens of millions of dollars state by state to defeat GMO labeling laws. How can you fight back? How can you protect your family, your children, your grandchildren? Click that big orange button right now. Activate your no risk subscription and get Dr. Blaylock's easy to use guide to avoiding GMO foods. And as soon as you order, you can come right back and watch the rest of Dr. Blaylock's presentation. Let's return to Dr. Blaylock now, but when I come back, I'll show you even more valuable ways to use Dr. Blaylock's guide to avoiding GMO foods. I'll see you in just a few minutes. Now, we said that the males were also dying at a much higher rate uh, than the non-GMO fed animals, and that most of those animals were dying of either liver failure, kidney damage, or both. Uh, we did see an increased number of tumors in uh, the males, but it wasn't as high as the females. Two of the tumors in males were highly malignant kidney tumors, uh, and these usually occurred again after that 90-day limit that the World Health Organization had set for uh, testing uh, foods. The male rats eating the GMO corn developed a very high incidence of both kidney and liver damage. Uh, this damage was synergistic with toxic traces of the glyphosate or the uh, pesticide uh, herbicides that's used on the corn product itself. So uh, that adds significantly to this toxicity to the liver and the kidneys. The dose of this uh, herbicide used in the study was far less 
and is commonly found in human food. It's also been shown that the GMO corn causes hemorrhages in the stomach and the intestines of these animals, which is very important, particularly with the high incidence of leaky gut syndrome uh, in the human population. Uh, so we want to know, what is this uh, going to mean to me as a consumer of these products? How important is this? Well, we now know that some 3 billion acres of crops around the world are, are now genetically engineered, and this is growing uh, very rapidly. It's estimated that some 30,000 processed foods found in the supermarket shelves contains at least one GMO component. That is, it's, it's got a corn product in it, corn flour, uh, corn protein, etc., or soy uh, component in it. So 30,000 processed foods that are on the, the, the shelves uh, at this time. Translating the data from the animal studies to humans means that eating a GMO food starting early in life uh, can dramatically increase your incidence if you're a female of breast cancer and if you're a male, liver damage and kidney damage, uh, particularly as you begin to reach middle age. We know now that the incidence of both liver and kidney diseases is increasing very rapidly since the period that GMO has been approved. We'll return to Dr. Blaylock in one moment, but I want to make sure you caught a very important point that he just made. GMO ingredients are now in 30,000 supermarket foods. You can no longer just go shopping and put any food into your grocery cart. In the animal studies, females eating GMO foods showed a very high incidence of breast cancers and a 70% early death rate. Males showed a high incidence of liver and kidney failure with a 50% early death rate. Fortunately, there is a simple solution. Get Dr. Blaylock's guide to avoiding GMO foods. This guide is yours free just for trying a no-risk subscription to Dr. Blaylock's wellness report for only 15 cents a day. Just click on that big orange button that you see at the bottom of your screen and activate your subscription and claim your free guide, bonus reports, and DVD. You can easily take this small 24-page guide with you to the grocery store and in just seconds identify harmful foods and also know which foods are safe. Right off, you'll discover which foods are most likely to be genetically modified. And some of these are corn, soybeans, zucchini, squash, papaya, potatoes, salmon, and vegetable oils. But there are several more. And you'll also discover how some of America's largest GMO crops, like sugar beets, corn, and soy, are used in thousands of processed and packaged foods, and how the GMO ingredients are hidden on the labels under safe-sounding names. You'll also get a list of the 62 GMO food ingredients used in processed foods in alphabetical order. Before buying any bagged, boxed, canned, or bottled product, check the label and match it to the list in the guide. If you find one of the 62 GMO ingredients, don't buy that product. Next, look for products that have these labels. The first one is USDA Organic. Any food with this label will be natural, as Mother Nature intended, not a lab-created frankenfood that's been sprayed with large quantities of toxic chemicals. Second, look for the non-GMO Project Verified label. This is an independent nonprofit that uses the most advanced scientific testing to detect GMO contamination. Any food with this label is likely 99% safe. All right, but what about meats, poultry, fish, and dairy products? Well, Dr. Blaylock's guide has you covered there, too. While currently no animals or fish are genetically modified, they are fed GMO corn and soy-based foods. And this is just another way that GMOs can enter your body. When buying meat, look for USDA Organic. Another safe label is the American Grass-Fed Association, which certifies the animals have been raised naturally without GMO foods. But Watch out for these deceptive labels, which can include animals fed a GMO diet. One, free range. Two, cage free. Three, naturally raised. And when it comes to dairy products, avoid everything that does not have the USDA organic seal. The non-GMO project seal, or does not have the from cows not treated with RBST label. Fortunately, Dr. Blaylock quickly sorts all of this out for you in just 24 pages, showing you which foods are safe and which ones are not. 
Here is everything you'll receive when you try a no-risk subscription to Dr. Blaylock's Wellness Report for just 15 cents a day. You can click on the big orange button at the bottom of your screen at any time to activate the special subscription offer and claim your free gifts. And of course, you can still watch all of Dr. Blaylock's presentation. Click on it now to ensure that you'll get your free copy of Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods. Now, why are the GMO foods so dangerous? Do we understand what is really happening? Well, laboratories around the world are looking at this and they're finding uh, that the GMO foods not only are damaging liver and kidneys, but also the adrenal glands, the heart, lungs, intestines, pancreas, colon. So it's uh, uh, impacting a lot of organs. And on a microscopic level, we know that GMO foods can damage very parts of the cell. For instance, mitochondria and cell membranes, chromosomes. Uh, and so the reason that it's uh, doing this appears to be that genetic alteration. When you activate a gene inside of a plant to say make it produce more protein or make it produce a certain plant pesticide, it affects all the genes on each side of it. So it's turning on more than just that gene. And when we look at some of these genetically modified foods, for instance, uh, one of them they found, it was a, a pea, a genetically modified pea, was producing inflammation throughout the body of the person. Uh, and we know that a great number of diseases are related to inflammation. Uh, one interesting case was a GMO uh, form of celery. Now, what they found is they were growing this GMO celery in the field when the workers would go pick the celery, or an occasional worker would eat it as they're picking it, picking the, the salary, it would burn their mouth and burn their hand. So they quickly took it off uh, consideration for putting it on the shelves. So sometimes this massive production of these uh, toxic substances by plants can produce actual burns and blistering uh, in the mouth and on the hand. One of the really frightening effects that I found about GMO foods was its effect on the reproductive system. Uh, this is because it is transgenerational. What that means, if you take an animal and you feed it a GMO food during pregnancy, and then you take the offspring and observe that offspring, you find out the offspring has low fertility. And then if it does become pregnant and has a third generation, the third generation also has low fertility. So there's a transgenerational suppression of fertility of that animal. Uh, and this can go on uh, for uh, ad infinitum. For example, one study found that infertility caused by GMO corn was transmitted through three generations, meaning that it would affect your grandchildren. And you don't have to consume the GMO corn each generation, only the first generation. It's transmitted through all three generations. And that's because they've discovered that these genes pass through the placenta into the uh, infant and then that infant, when it uh, has a baby, it's transmitted again. So it goes transgenerationally. What can you do to protect yourself against these GMO foods? Well, most important, obviously, is don't eat them. Uh, avoid products that contain corn uh, and soy in particular, because these are the ones uh, that have the highest percentage, 75% and 95% uh, uh, being GMO-type food. And in many uh, countries, they're not required to label it as containing GMO foods or GMO products. Uh, the herbicides are, uh, that has been studied has been shown to stimulate high levels of free radicals uh, in organs and tissues. Uh, this has been well demonstrated in numerous studies. Uh, it build, you want to counteract that by building up your antioxidant network and we talk about this in the newsletter a lot, is that you want to take melatonin, you want to take a mixture of antioxidants, you want to eat uh, organic, healthy fruits and vegetables that contain flavonoids that are powerful antioxidants. That helps neutralize a lot of these toxic effects, but it may not neutralize all of the effects of the GMO foods. We'll get back to the conclusion of Dr. Blaylock's presentation in just a moment, but let me briefly recap what we've learned so far today and also tell you about two additional reports you'll receive free with our special offer today. We now know that the safety approval on GMO foods was based on short-term studies. 
but the full life animal studies showed numerous cancers, kidney and liver failure, and early death occurring at the equivalent human ages of 10 to 50. No safety study with lab animals was long enough to even reach the equivalent human age of 10 years, so that's pretty scary. And what's more, we've learned that GMO crops have been altered to tolerate much higher doses of herbicides and pesticides and that the residues of these toxic chemicals are in GMO produce, in GMO food ingredients, and in GMO animal feed. Now we also know that babies and children brought up on a GMO diet are especially vulnerable in immune system development. That's why we call them frankenfoods. Nobody knows for sure just what kind of harm they'll do. We do know from the animal studies that GMO foods can create fertility problems, which can be passed on to three generations. Some women may not get pregnant, or their daughters may not get pregnant. We've also learned that food manufacturers use deceptive labels, not only to hide GMOs, but to suggest their foods are wholesome, natural, and nutritious. With grocery stores infested with GMO foods today and no clear GMO labeling, there is an urgent need for a solution. And that solution is Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods, yours free today when you try a no-risk subscription to the Blaylock Wellness Report at just 15 cents a day. And here's more good news. With our special offer today, you'll also receive free copies of two valuable reports, Food Additives, What You Eat Can Kill You, and Buying Organic Foods on the Cheap. The first report shows you the harmful chemical additives put into processed foods under deceptive, safe-sounding names. For example, take monosodium glutamate, or MSG. And most people know it's unhealthy, but they don't know it's hidden in thousands of foods under safe-sounding names. You see, over time, ingesting MSG can cause arthritis, depression, multiple sclerosis, thyroid problems, obesity, pancreatic diseases, intestinal disorders, fertility problems, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, many different kinds of cancers, plus Alzheimer's and Parkinson's diseases. Food manufacturers love using MSG because it sharply enhances food flavors and even creates taste addiction. But they know they can't put MSG on the label without scaring off consumers. So how do they get around this? Well, years ago, they paid Washington lobbyists to get FDA labeling laws loosened up. And today, if a food additive contains less than 99% pure MSG, it can be called by dozens of other names, some sounding quite safe, such as soy protein, natural flavors, and even stock broth. Well, the result is that tens of millions of people are eating themselves sick every day and are even giving themselves diseases that are potentially fatal. In Dr. Blaylock's report, you'll discover these deceptive names so that you can check the labels and avoid MSG. Some other harmful additives include the chemical sweeteners that are popular with dieters and diabetics. These can cause brain damage and cancers. And when these chemical sweeteners are combined with MSG, the damage done by the MSG is doubled, which means all the diseases I just mentioned will come sooner and be worse. Also, many vegetable oils that line grocery store shelves and that are also used in processed foods can lead to life-threatening diseases such as heart disease, obesity, cancer, and the increased inflammation that's at the heart of all degenerative diseases. Get Dr. Blaylock's report and get the names of the food additives you must avoid. Next, our special subscription offer today includes a free report by Dr. Blaylock's sister publication, Health Radar buying organic foods on the cheap. When we did our survey, we found that most people would buy organic foods if they weren't so expensive. Well, here's the solution. This report shows you how to buy organic foods at significantly lower prices so they won't bust your budget. And that's going to be important in this age of GMO infestation. So don't wait for a health crisis to strike your family. Click on that big orange button at the bottom of your screen to activate your no-risk subscription to the Blaylock Wellness Report at just 15 cents a day, and do it now. You'll also receive free copies of Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods, his special report, Food Additives, What You Eat Can Kill You, the Health Radar Report, Buying Organic Foods on the Cheap, and you'll also receive a free DVD video of Dr. Blaylock's full presentation that you've seen today, Cracking the GMO Code. 
If the animal studies are any indication, this valuable kit could save you and your children from sickness, from disease, and from early death. And I know you're going to love the Blaylock Wellness Report. Remember, a health crisis struck his family and conventional medicine failed them. That's why you can trust his guidance. He did the hard research. He found the answers and he has the safe solutions. And remember, you must be completely satisfied with the Blaylock Wellness Report or your money back. And you can still keep your free GMO guide, special reports, and the DVD. And finally, let me just say that we're going to keep that big orange button activated and available to you for only a few minutes longer. So you must act now to take advantage of this incredible offer. Click that big orange button now. Start your no-risk subscription and get your free kit, including Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods. Now, here is Dr. Blaylock for the conclusion of his presentation. I want to thank you for watching today, and I hope that I've impressed upon you that this is a worldwide, very serious problem. I've pointed out to you that the early death rate was something that we're seeing in animals fed these foods, and the foods are the very same foods that are found on the supermarket shelf. And I've, uh, I've wanted to impress upon you that there are things that can be done to protect yourself. I've uh, outlined uh, some of these, uh, but we need uh, more information which you can gather uh, to uh, show exactly how you can go about doing this. Uh, so I thank you very much for watching today. Well, you just heard Dr. Blaylock say that you need to gather more information as the GMO infestation of our food supply is a very serious problem. And here's the additional information you need. Remember, this GMO problem is not going to go away. The GMO seed companies are selling patented seeds that are very profitable, and they're also selling the toxic chemicals used in abundance on GMO crops. GMO seed and food companies are making a lot of money on this, and that's why they continue to spend tens of millions of dollars to defeat GMO labeling laws state by state. They don't want you to know that potentially harmful GMOs are in your foods, frankenfoods. And that means there's only one way to protect yourself your family, and your children. Get Dr. Blaylock's Guide to Avoiding GMO Foods. Take it with you to the grocery store and keep GMO foods out of your shopping cart and off your table. We have put together a terrific kit that will enable you to do this. And then each month, Dr. Blaylock will keep you up to date on GMOs and provide trusted guidance on all major health problems, their true causes and their natural solutions. Please listen to Dr. Blaylock and follow his guidance. Your life, the lives of those you love, could depend on it. Click that big orange button right now.